pleasure now to be joined by UFC featherweight Josh Emmett, who we talked to not long ago for doing really good stuff in his Sacramento community, a uh, member of Team Alpha Male, and he's the co-main event this Saturday in Las Vegas against Peter Burgos. Uh, just how much are you looking for? Did I say that right, Peter, right? Uh, Shane. 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 Burgos. You know what's funny? I think of Peter Burgos, a former baseball player from the Angels, and I knew that was wrong. <laughs> Shane Hurricane right. Burgos. That's Dang, right. I like a Peter. Yeah. <laughs> how much? How much are you? Uh, I mean, how's Vegas right now? I know it's a lot different than uh, probably the last time you were there. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're actually staying. Um, we're staying right next to the the new arena, the Allegiant Arena, the Raider Stadium. So it, it's kind of nice. We're not on the Strip. We're not staying at a big casino where we have to walk, you know, quite a ways. We have, uh, you know, I have, we have suites and they have two rooms in them. We have like our own common area. We have a, a kitchen. It's actually, it's really nice. And then there's just the, the UFC rented out the entire hotel. So it's just fighters and corners and they have security everywhere, every entrance. So you can't sneak people in and things like that. You have to have your credentials to come in here um it, it's the weather is awesome right now uh, we're, we're talking to you on tuesday night and uh I'm, I'm curious you got there today how many times you've been tested already uh j- just once right now okay. so I, I got tested our uh results come back they said within like 24 hours so tomorrow we'll get our results um and then we can access like the performance institute um, and, and get like, you know, massage, we can work with the physical therapist, uh, we can use the pool here, uh, once those comes come back. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's good, then, then we kind of can do what we want. I, I'm mainly just going to relax and just get my workouts in. I'm, I'm just working on my, my weight cut. I look a little skinnier than we last talked, right? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. <laughs> I'm back. I still got a little ways to go. I wish I gained that COVID-19, uh, but nope, I definitely lost much more than that. So how, how, how is that for you? I mean, is it, I know you, you know, you've, you've this entire time you were gearing up for fights and the fight was pulled injuries, you know, up and down, didn't know if there was going to be fights. And, and when we last spoke, it was, you're gearing up for the, the, you're hoping to get the fight. You got granted the fight. This is the, was the last one on the contract and, and just kind of take us through that, that thought process of just having to stay ready. Yeah, it's, it's tough. So like I said before, when, uh, you know, the pandemic started and, and we got, you know, quarantined and all the shelter in place, I was like, I'm going to come out of this better than when I started. Uh, since I haven't fought, since I fought at the Golden One Center last July, I knew I would be getting a fight soon. I was hoping for mid-June to possibly July. And um, I, I was just, I was working so hard, you know. Um, I, I stuck to a regiment, regimented schedule um, throughout the entire quarantine. I, I was on a strict diet. I was getting my personals and one-on-ones with my, you know, my coaches, um, Joey, Danny, and Chris, and, and Darren. And, um, yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've been doing great. I've been working with my mind coach, um, Joshua uh, Manuel. I have a dietitian that I, I flew out here, and um, she's making all my meals. And just I, I, feel, the, I feel the best I've ever felt. I, I look the best I've ever felt. Um, even though the weight cut is always going to be super difficult. Um, I, I'm in a good place right now and I only have, you know, it's Tuesday night here. You know, I have, it's going to be a hard uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so only two more days of this and, and possibly a little bit before the weigh-ins on Friday. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to, to getting back in there and, and fighting during this time, being able to, uh, you know, make some money and, and, uh, and I'm just enjoying it, you know, even though this is different than, than typical fight week, I don't have as many obligations, especially being the co-main event. Um, you know, I only have like a handful of interviews. They came out earlier and, uh, you know, did some filming and things like that. So they'll, they'll air almost like a road to the octagon type of thing. It'll be shown on ESPN before, before the fight, I'm sure on Saturday um also you know i had one fight left on my contract and and with the burgos fight um i was able to ink a new four fight deal that i'm that i'm happy with um yeah and so i i just got to go out there i have to perform do what i do best and and stick to the game plan and win and then uh everything that i i set out to do and accomplish and everything i want will just kind of fall into place so um i'm just staying positive and you know i have the best 
coaches in the game with me. I, you know, I have the best team and, and just everything, you know. So uh, it, it's going to be a good week and an even better weekend. Josh, what, what type of relief is that, knowing that, you know, you're not looking at free agency after this fight, that you, you have your, your future for the, at least the next four fights secured with the, within the UFC and you don't have to think about that going into this fight? Oh, it, yeah, it's, it, it takes a lot of pressure off my shoulders, that's for sure, just because it's like I'm, I'm, I'm gambling if I was going to fight out my contract last time to test free agency. And now that I think about it, as crazy as it sounds, I'm, I'm happy I got injured because if, if I would have fought that fight, I would have been a free agent. Yeah, who knows where I'd be? I'd be in some crazy situation right now maybe. And maybe I would have signed with another company and a lot of organizations aren't fighting till next year. Um, depending on how the fight went, you don't, I, I don't know. We didn't fight. Like maybe the, it would just be put me in a bad position, but now uh, I got a, it's a tougher opponent in my mind. He, he's ranked 10. Um, he only has one loss on his record to a guy that's in the top six. Um, so it's going to be a, a tough, tough fight. And so it was able to, you know, I feel like I was able to get a little bit more um, of my worth, you know, and, and ink a bigger uh, fight deal. And then I got, you know, the co-main event. It's not, it's not a main event slot or anything, but it's okay. It'll do. And uh, there'll, there'll be a lot of eyes on us. So I, I'm, hopefully we'll reach a, a new demographic because we are some of the only sport up and running in the world. And it seems like that much more uh, viewership is, is, has been happening uh, these past few weeks. Yeah. I mean, you said it too, especially, you know, it's going to be a little different. There's no crowd within the, within the area that you're at. And I know you kind of feed off that crowd a little bit, especially when you were here in Sacramento, but you're getting two straight fights on really essentially free TV for a lot of these people. And you're going to be introducing yourself to a lot of different fans. As you said, I can't imagine what that opportunity must feel like. Yeah, no, no, it is great. Just like just everything. And, and even the, um, you know, I got this fight on four week notice, um, which is like for a fight camp, it's, it's a little shorter than I would have liked, but you know, I've been training. I was just like, yeah, you know, I'll make it happen. Um, so I had three hard weeks of training and then I come out here and, and it's fight week. It's really about just getting the weight down and, uh, yeah, but I, but I'm looking for, I, I, I've been working hard, um, since, you know, March, uh, really since February, since I got back from Vietnam and, um, yeah, just more eyes on me and reaching a different demographic and, um, yeah, hopefully I just secure a lot more fans and things like that. Yeah, that's great. And when you think about too, um, as you kind of go forward, I know you don't want to necessarily look beyond this fight, but I was talking to your former um, teammate, uh, Cynthia Calvillo, last week. And as she was going into her first main event uh, last week where she was victorious, she's talking about how fighters who are able to fight right now have been kind of given a promise about four fights within the year because the UFC is just pumping out fights during this time. Is that something that you would like to do and, and possibly fight that much throughout oh, this, this oh, time? Yeah. You know, I, I always want to stay active. I'm, I'm a hungry fighter. I want to you know, get as many fights as I can in and be as consistent as possible. It's just been kind of tough. Uh, after I, you know, I had a long layoff, I, I beat a tough Michael Johnson. I beat uh, Mirsad Bektik. I wanted to turn around and fight two, three months later. I was looking at a huge, I wanted to fight Aldo or someone in the top three, but then he moved down. There was no one for me to fight. Um, and then that's when they gave me that, that Arnold Allen fight, which, you know, is way behind me, but I was taking it just to test the free agency. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do want to fight. So I, I have to first and foremost go in there and, and beat a tough, tough guy that's in front of me, Shane Burgos. Um, and then after, you know, I get my hand raised. Yeah, I, I want to get at least two fights in this year, uh, possibly three, just depending on what happens. You know, as long as I'm, I'm healthy, um, I think I could fight now. I could fight in August, September, and then get one more in by the end of the year. So I, I feel like I could get three more in, and, and I would love to. Um, I just have to, you know, get this win first and then and see kind of what, what happens or what they're throwing out at me because I, I believe I'm possibly two fights away, uh, two wins away uh, for fighting for the title. Um, and, and who knows, just with uh, international fighters not being able to get visas, not being able to get into, uh, you know, the country and things like that, they're only doing Fight Island for the month of July. So maybe I go in there and make a crazy statement. There aren't people available. Um, and, and they're, you know, 
I get that shot, you know, I could be one to two fight, two wins away for fighting for the title. So uh, I, I just have to go in there and, and, and beat Burgos and outclass him and, um, you know, just just do what I do, just put him away in a devastating fashion. And I'm looking for my, you know, my every, every strike I throw, I'm looking to finish the fight. Um, will it go that way? Who knows? I hope, um, but, I, but I'll be trying for sure. What's the uh, training been like for you at this point? I mean, I know, you know, the team alpha male and, and ultimate fitness has been kind of shut down for everybody, but luckily you've had, you know, because it is closed down, you're able to kind of come in and still prepare for fights. Um, is it, is it difficult to train in this environment or, you know, not once, I mean, once like you said, a four week notice in this environment, I mean, that's, that, I, I can't, I don't know how that, what that feels like. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tough for sure. But um, I've been so strict on my diet. I'm working with one of the, the best dietitians in the world. She actually works with the, some, you know, world champion boxers, UFC champion. She's the main dietitian for the USA Olympic um, boxing team as well. Mm. She's been around for a while. So I've been following all her stuff to the T. I've been doing a lot of individualized stuff, like I said, with my boxing coach, Joey Rodriguez. Uh, Danny Castillo, Chris Holdsworth, and my strength coach, Darren Draven. And I've been able to just work on things that I need to work on to better myself. I, I do feel better. I, like I said, I, the, the best shape I've been in, the best I look, the best I feel, um, we just haven't had practices. So it's like I will find out um, Saturday. Yeah. But, but if I go in there and I perform really well and in, in, in my conditioning and everything's on point and, and, and I do perform the way that I expect to, Maybe this will be a new norm for me. Maybe I don't need all those practices because my body feels way better because I'm not just going through all these, these grueling practices, you know, two, three practices. It's such a high intensity for five, six days a week. Um, I've been able to you just, just, just work with the coaches and I'm still getting high intensity workouts, but we're just working on me. I'm not getting all banged up. I'm not doing like the hard, hard sparring and the hard, hard wrestling I'm doing hard drilling with the coaches but they're taking care of me i trust them i'm not going to get injured by them um so i, I might take uh, this might like i said be a new norm and and, and i might um uh, depending on how things go saturday just continue to do what i did during this this quarantine and, and just protect my body and and with age since i'm getting older i've been working on just a ton of different uh, i always have you know my chiropractor um, you know, I, I have a, a massage therapist. I, I do a lot of different things. I, I, I float at capital floats, you know, and they just opened another one up in Auburn. Um, I, I do so many different things and that are just good for my body. And, and I feel the best I've ever felt, even though I'm 35 years old, you know, it's, uh, I feel like I really have things dialed in now. And I think the longevity of my career, um, I was always thinking, hopefully I have a good four or five years. Who knows? Maybe I have a good six, seven years left, you know, the way I'm feeling and, and just the, the, uh, the people and the, that I have access to, you know, I feel like I'm just truly blessed and um, everything is really coming together for me. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear, but I think it's been great for me. This, this quarantine is crazy as that sounds it's encouraging to hear that because you'll hear critics when, you know, there's a long layoff, they'll say, Oh, there's ring rust as a fighter, as a competitor. Is there anything that makes you worried about that? Is that ever in the back of your mind, the longer the weight goes, uh, even though, like you said, you're feeling good, but you haven't been in that combat in a while. Is that ever a concern for you? The longer the, the absences between fights? Not really. You know, I, I don't, I don't really believe in ring rust. You know, it's like, if you look at, I had a 13 month layoff, I came back and I, I, I knocked out Michael Johnson and he's never been knocked out. He's, he's beat, you know, former uh, interim champions. He's fought the best of the best. Um, yeah. And if I, I've had layoffs in my career. It's for me, it's just, if I'm in the best shape uh, condition wise and I can go and, and go for 15 minutes hard, I know how to fight. I've been an athlete my entire life. I've wrestled since I was a little kid. I played every sport. I, you know, I, I feel like I have the athletic ability, like, you know, I, I know how to fight, you know, it's, sure. and, and even if I'm not in the best shape, I can still fight, but will I be able to go at that high pace for a long time? Probably not, but it's the same thing if I was walking down the street and, you know, something happened and I had to like defend someone or myself, I'm not going to be like, Hey, I'm out of shape, you know, it, hopefully it didn't come to that, but you know, I, you know, I, I know how to fight regardless. Um, 
yeah, and, and I've, I've been training uh, for such a long time with the best, you know, fighters in the world, uh, Team Alpha Male, and just all the, the fighters, uh, former champions that come through our gym and coaches and things like that uh, to cross train. And, and I've been training with them, you know, and this is when I was an amateur and I could hold my own or when I was like one, two and oh as a pro. So it's like, and I've, I've developed so much uh, and I'm continuing to evolve and learn on a daily, weekly basis. And I feel like just sky's the limit, you know? And uh, yeah, so. No, it's awesome. I mean, when you think about, uh, you know, what the challenge ahead of you with Shane Burgos, I mean, what just, when you look at him, just what kind of stands out as you kind of game plan for what his talents are? Yeah. So he's like a lot of people, he, he's a well-rounded fighter. He's, it's a tough fight. He's uh he's, a big featherweight for the division. He's, he's 5'11". He has long reach, uh, just a physically a big guy. Um, he has a lot of output. You know, he, he throws, he just, the highest, I think the highest like strike count in, in the division, you know, the, the, he lands like seven something strikes per minute. Um, he has a gas tank for days. Um, and he's a BJJ black belt. So people are known for striking how, how good he is, but he's also a, a black belt. So it's going to be a tough fight, but I feel like I'm a, a dangerous um, fight for anyone in the division. And and with him coming forward in, in the manner that he does, just walking people down and being that aggressive, I won't have to worry about chasing him. I will hit him. You know, I, I will land and sometimes he'll drop his hands and that's not a good thing to do. If he starts dropping his hands, it'll make, you know, literally it just takes one shot from me and I can uh, either you know, end or change the fight just with one shot. And I don't think a lot of featherweights in the division have the, the power I possess. Um, so I, I'm, I'm ready for a 15 minute just war. I'm, I'm prepared for that. Um, but I'm hoping it doesn't go the distance. When you think about, I mean, we're talking about how they're just pumping out fights right now and team alpha male has been, you know, a good, has been the benefactor of a lot of that because uh, you've had so many teammates, Cody Garbrandt victorious two weeks ago, uh, Andre Feely last week, you've got Clay Guida with you this week. I mean, is it fun to have that kind of camaraderie? Everyone's gearing up for fights and knowing that it could be a quick turnaround for a future fight that once, once you're done with the one at hand. Yeah, no, it is exciting. And that's like the group we kind of had, um, you know, we got together like a few months ago and we've been drilling, we've been sparring, doing all these types of things together. And then it's like, yeah, we're just getting, you know, one prepared for, you know, one week and then it's the next week, then the next week. And then everyone's back in the gym training again. And it's, yeah, it's, it's still like the, the atmosphere, the energy is high in, in the gym, uh, even though there isn't, you know, a ton of people. Uh, yeah. But everyone's just kind of helping everyone. And it, it has been, it's been a neat experience, you know, and, and yeah, and we're, we're just all pumped, you know, cause we're, we're, we're getting hiring off these wins and then we're trying to one up each other, you know? So they're, they're getting knockouts. Andre is trying to get knockout. I'm sure like I'm going to try to one up Cody. Uh, and then, you know, Clay is going to start us off. And then we got Sarah McMahon the week after us. So it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy how many we're just constantly fighting and fighting. We're calling it the summer of Tam and we're going to keep that ball rolling. Seeing that punch from Cody was, uh, I, I thought of you immediately. The one you had it was Michael Johnson, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe it wasn't at the buzzer like his was, but, uh, it was very, it looked very similar. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, that was awesome. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm glad that uh, he came back and he's, you know, it's, it's gotta be tough. Like he was saying, you know, former world champion, he had a few losses and everyone's counting him out and you hear all this bad, like, journalists just writing bad things and, and people saying stuff and yeah he, he can fight like that he'll win you know he, he made the fight look easy you know i mean he, he's so athletic if he just stays on the outside and just moves around he could, he could beat people with a jab uh but he was saying he was just getting you just can't let the emotions get involved this is a fight you're going to get hit so when you get hit you have to kind of stick to the plan you can't just kind of dart in and he did that he, he did exactly that and he did really well. And yeah, I'm happy he's, he's back. And, you know, he continues to train and, and fight like that. I think um, he'll make a, a run back at that title. 
with the differences in the way this week is, and obviously you've got coaches that have, have experienced it. They've been down there with other teammates, like we said in previous fights. Um, is that, is that any concern at all to you? And if not, is what's your biggest concern with the, just this, this week and this fight coming up? Um, yeah, I think I just have a little insight of just the coaches. They, they've been in Jacksonville. They've been back and forth to Vegas. They know exactly how everything works. They were telling me about it, just everything that, uh, so they can kind of, I just ask questions. They prepare me so I can prepare for it mentally. Um, and then I work with, you know, like I said, I work with a mind coach, uh, and, and we've been doing a lot of, a lot of things and just preparing me for it. It's, it's going to be awkward. It's going to be weird, you know, like no fans, uh, it's just going to be silence in there, but you know, I think I'm going to be more prepared than my opponent. That's for sure. Just a lot of the exercises and visualization and things that I've been doing. Um, so yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. I, I feel like we have the advantage and, um, also just, you know, we're from Sacramento. Our flight was an hour out here today, an hour and five minutes. Um, my opponent, you know, he had to come from the East coast, but he's been out here, I guess, for like two and a half weeks already. So not, maybe he just wasn't getting the training that, uh, because it's, from, you know, he's from New York. So a lot of things are closed down. I think he had to keep traveling around. So I think he just came out to the PI to get his, his, his proper training in and, you know, get work on whatever the last bit of camp. So, you know, I feel like I have the advantage there as well. Yeah, that's great. And it's funny because the stuff you won't hear, crowd noise and all that stuff, but then there's the stuff you could hear. You'll be able to hear your coaches better. You'll be able to hear his coaches. And I, and even Cynthia was talking about last week, you could even hear the broadcasters likely. Yeah. Do you try to block that out or do you kind of take that in? I mean, I know you're not in that position yet, but how do you kind of approach that? No, yeah, no, I, I take it in. I, very coachable. Like I, I've wrestled and, you know, at the state tournament, national tournament in college, it's loud. I, at all my fights, I, I can hear my coaches. So I am very good about hearing and listening to them. They tell me to do something or combo, you know, I'll nod, I'll wait a little because I know they can hear it as well. Um, I can even hear some of my wrestling coaches, college coaches and, and high school coaches that still come to my fights when they're yelling, I can hear them in the crowd. Um, I also, I, I do hear my opponents uh, coaches a lot. And, and sometimes, you know, it's just, uh, it's kind of funny. Like they'll, they'll say a combo and I kind of know what it is. So I'll throw it just what they're saying for their opponent to throw. You know, I, I, I kind of play around with that. I hear everyone. I, I, I don't get in that tunnel vision where I'm just like zoned out. Like, you know, I'm super focused on the task at hand, but I'm, I still, I'm very coachable and I listen to everything I can hear everyone. So this is just going to be amplified uh, and I will be listening to the, the commentators. They got their headsets on. So I, I heard they talk even louder so I'll be listening to them and, you know, trying to use that as an advantage as well and listen to my, my opponent's uh, corner and then, then, of course, mine. And, uh, you know, it's going to – yeah, it, it'll work out in my favor. It's funny because sometimes those, uh, those commentators will react to something that, you know, was easily blocked and didn't have the impact that they thought it would. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I've been seeing that on TV. I'm like, oh, man. So we'll <laughs> see. I, I, I'm – I'm prepared for it, but, but I, I don't really know until, until Saturday night. Uh, if we talk after, then I'll, I'll let you know how I, how I really feel about that. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know, and it was funny because I was hoping the next time we did this, it would be in person. Last time we spoke, you know, you were doing big things in the community and helping out people on the front lines, hospital workers with the, with the help of Vibe uh, Health Bar. And um, what was just that experience like? And, 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 tr and I mean, we talked about what, what the motivation was to do something, but now that it's kind of in the rear view uh, and, and you're now focused on fights, are you able to kind of reflect on that and be pretty proud of what you guys were able to accomplish? Yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. You know, um, Vibe Health Bar had a, you know, GoFundMe page. And then I was working with uh, Feed the Frontlines 916. And that was put on by Limelight Bar and Grill and, and my favorite restaurant crew uh, and, and Oboe and stuff like that. So I was helping them just raise a lot of money to feed, feed the frontline healthcare workers that were, you know, I, like I said before, I was just happy to be able to, you know, give back to, to my city and the community because they're always in my corner when I go fight and now I got to be in their corner. Uh, and it was the fight that I enjoyed because I wasn't actually getting hit in the face. And I, you know, I had a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of just fun doing it. And it, I don't know, it was just neat when I would deliver the meals to the, um, 
you know, to the hospitals and, and the nurses, the doctors and the staff, they were just, they were genuinely just so happy and grateful. And I was like, I was grateful for them, you know, just for what they were doing for us. And just, like I said, risking their lives to, you know, protect us. And I, and I have a lot of friends that are doctors and nurses as well. And that were, you know, working with COVID patients. And it is scary because we, we don't know what's going on. And I, like I said, I still, who knows what's going on now, but it's still, it's a real thing. And it, you know, you, you get it. It's, it, it's not a pretty sight and everyone responds definitely to it. But, but now here I am fighting and everyone from Sacramento is, you know, hitting me up and they're, you know, just make Sacramento proud. And everyone's in my corner again, like when I fight. So I, I aim to go out there and put on a, a hell of a show and, you know, I'll be coming out to my, my Sacramento theme music. I'll be wearing my, 916 face mask and the weigh-ins everything you know it just i'm proud to be from sacramento i you know i, I love my city and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna rep it till the till the end walkout music's gonna stay the same 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 as sacramento always yeah that's awesome i really appreciate you doing this josh uh, i wish you the best of luck on saturday uh, i'm hoping we can uh, catch up again soon and hopefully we'll be talking another fight in the in the not too distant future Cool. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. You got it, sir. Best of luck to you. All right. Thank you.